diving right into our topic which is abutments in FTD. First we need to know what is an abutment. Abutment is a natural tooth or root which retains or support a bridge. Here you can see here there is a missing teeth. So those adjacent teeth which is prepared to support the missing teeth that is known as your abutment. Now what is an ideal abutment? Ideal abutment should be unrestored, it should be vital and it should be in normal anatomical position. We need to see how to evaluate your abutment. Important characteristics of an abutment which must be evaluated. First is the location, position and the condition of your tooth. Next comes the crown root ratio. Third is your root configuration. How is the root configuration? And fourth is the periodontal ligament or root surface area. In with location, position and condition of the tooth. If using an endodontically treated teeth, then first the teeth must be restored with post and core to reduce the chances of fracture. If a teeth is endodontically treated then you must build a post and core and then only you can use it as a abutment now one key point is that if a teeth was pulp cat then it should not be used as an abutment why what is the reason pulp cat teeth should not be used as an abutment because there is a risk of undergoing rct treatment later on pain or any other symptoms can develop so it is not ideal to use a pulp cap teeth as an abutment. Then usually a teeth with longer clinical crown will provide maximum retention and resistance. Next feature is crown root ratio. Very important. Crown root ratio is a measure of length of the tooth occlusal to the alveolar crest of bone compared with the length of root embedded in the bone. That is, here you can see length of the, here you can see the alveolar crest of the bone. The red line, I have marked the alveolar crest of the bone. Don't think that this or the top of your gingiva is what we are talking about. No, we are talking about the bone, periodontal bone, alveolar crest of the periodontal bone okay so that with the length of the root embedded inside the bone it is not the part of the root which is embedded inside the gingiva or which is not seen it is what is embedded inside the bone so this is your crown length until here and this is your root length now there is a optimum crown to root length that is 2 is to 3. Ideal is 1 is to 2 and minimum, minimum which we need is 1 is to 1. These uh, values are important. For root configuration. Here, roots that are broader labiolingually than their mesiodistally are preferable. That is, here just see like this. Labiolingually, if the roots are broader than mesiodistally then these kind of roots are preferred over a particularly rounded root this provides more retention now a multi rooted posterior teeth with widely separated roots okay there are widely separated roots that provide better pedial support than what something which is convergent or fused periodontal ligament larger teeth will have greater surface area therefore they'll be able to bear the added stress here you need to know the root surface area of certain teeth the highest is for maxillary first molar that is 433 followed by maxillary second molar and mandibular first molar which both are 
फोर थर्टी वन फोर थर्टी थ्री फोर थर्टी वन नाउ वी नीड टू नो द लीस्ट वैल्यूज दैट इज इन मैंडेबल द लीस्ट वैल्यूज ऑफ मैंडेबल ऑफ फर्स्ट प्रीमोला विच इज वन एटी एंड द वेरी लीस्ट वैल्यू आउट ऑफ ऑल ऑल टीप is of the mandibula central incisor which is 154 and this law was proposed by johnson and this law was proposed by johnson here it is said that the root surface area or total perisymmetrical area of the abutment teeth has to be equal or exceed the combined perisymmetrical area of the teeth being replaced with pontix that is if here there is a missing teeth here there are your abutments now the total perisymmetrical area of these should be equal to at least equal to or more than the perisymmetrical area of your missing teeth okay that is your antis law proposed by johnson now ratio 1 is to 1 satisfy this anti slope but ideally the ratio must be 2 is to 1 okay now fpd with short pontic span have better prognosis than those with long span fpd is usually preferred over short edentulous spans now coming to different types of abutments again this is important you have your normal abutment that is your ideal abutment which we told before the non carious ideally anatomically located tooth hmm? now other abutments are your pair abutment your tilted molar abutment then comes cantilever abutment and excessive damage abutment starting off with pair abutments here you can see edentulous space on both sides and this one if it acts as a abutment that is your pair abutment so let's see edentulous space occur on both sides of the teeth creating a lone free standing abutment that is your pair abutment now how to make this you know because the abutment is standing alone and two missing areas is there chances of dislodgement of the fpd is very high so you need to use a non rigid connector now this non rigid connector should be where should it be positioned here is your mesial side this is your pair abutment this is your distal side here your distal pontic will come this is the area where you must place the non rigid connector and why not on the mesial side because on the mesial side due to occlusal forces acting it will unseat the key away from keyway we'll talk about key and keyway now if an edentulous space is opposite to this here is your pair abutment but here there is an edentulous space or there is an rpd then there are chances of supra eruption of your posterior abutment so in those cases a non rigid connector is avoided now let's talk about the key and keyway this non rigid connector has a key and a keyway key is the male component and keyway is the female component as we know we are keeping in the distal side to the pair abutment we are using the non rigid connector so the key should be sorry the keyway should be placed on the distal side of the pair abutment and the key should be placed on the mesial side of your pontic next is tilted molar abutments definitely what know what is a tilted molar now we need to uh, overcome the situation in certain conditions definitely when we have to use this tilted molar as abutment so five methods can be used first the mesial surface of the tooth that is here 
if you find this is your tooth then the mesial side of the tooth is reduced but this can be done only if there is only a 30 degree of tilt okay and it is reduced until it becomes parallel to the long axis of the other abutments second method is you can use a modified partial veneer crown over the second molar third method is definitely orthodontic treatment fourth method is a non-rigid connector parallel to the long axis of the tilted molar and the fifth one is telescopic crown now what is a telescopic crown first what you do is as you can see this is your tilted molar so what you did first you reduce the tilted molar in size reduced it in such a way that you can give a coping on top of it a coping is given and and on this coping what you do you give vertical slots so already you have reduced the crown then you give a coping over that and you are giving vertical slots over the scoping and on top of it you are placing a crown that is it is almost like tri-layered you are placing a crown that crown is called as your telescopic crown hope you understood that is a tilted tooth is con reduced considerably after that a coping is fabricated over the tooth so that it alters the contour of the crown and then the crown is fabricated with vertical slots coping is left unpolished and co coping receives a second crown that is your telescopic crown next is cantilever abutment that is there is your prepared tooth your abutment here is your missing pontic only one side of the pontic is attached the other tooth is not used such condition it is called as cantilever abutment sufficient amount of tooth structure and more than average bone support must be present and cantilever bridge in central incisor is contraindicated because of the steep palatal vault and deep bite one more crucial point to remember is the canine replacement in FPD. Any FPD replacing a canine should be considered as a complex FPD. So, edentulous space created by loss of canine and any two contiguous teeth is usually best restored with RPD in case if you are to replace the missing maxillary or mandibular canine under complex FPD then always use your central laterals and first premolar as abutment so hope everything was clear please subscribe to our channel please do comment below and don't forget to share your queries thank you so much